Hello, welcome to our daily Godcast of evening prayer here on Labor Day, uh, Monday of the 22nd week in ordinary time. However, uh, at Holy Mass this morning, uh, rather than doing the ordinary time uh, readings for Mass, we switch to uh, the particular uh, deeds of the day Mass. Uh, there's a whole uh, different option for occasions like this for Labor Day where the church gives you an option of uh, sticking with the, the, the readings of the day or observing uh, the, the holiday and assigning appropriate readings for that day. And that's what we did this morning. We, we celebrated the Mass for Labor Day and the readings reflected the value, the sanctity of labor. And uh, we see throughout Scripture uh, that our Lord God in the Old Testament uh, was a proponent of, <laughs> of labor. He was a laborer himself. Uh, creation. <laughs> he made things. He made all things. So the, the labor of our, our God in heaven uh, is unparalleled. His, his uh, labors gave us all that we have. They also made us. And the crown jewel of creation, I suppose, you know, uh, would be the human person because uh, we were the last, uh, the the finale piece of his creation where he said this is now created in our own image and likeness. So, uh, and then instilling in us a soul so that we would have communion with him, relationship with him, uh, for, for all eternity through the efforts and work of both the Holy Spirit and his son Jesus Christ as well. Uh, you know how Jesus was always getting into trouble for working, right? Working in particular on the Sabbath. Boy, the Pharisees and the scribes were always uh, given Jesus a hard time for doing good things on the Sabbath day. How dare he raise someone from the dead or restore the health to someone who's crippled or blind, you know, or, or cure a leper on, on the Sabbath. I mean, my goodness, that's terrible, right? I mean, <laughs> it's just, but he would always straighten them out and explain to them that, you know, doing a good thing, there's never a wrong time to do a right thing. And, you know, it's, it's not so much what you're doing as it is why you're doing it when it comes to labor. On a Sabbath day, now, of course, is Catholic Christians, the Sabbath is Sunday. And the commandment says, Make the Lord's day holy. And what better way to make the Lord's day holy than to help someone out, help someone in need, to lend a hand to, to as Jesus said, I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I, I was sick and you came to visit me. That's work, you know. Now, on the other hand, something you don't want to do on the Sabbath, you know, so oh, I have an opportunity to make triple time on, on, on Sunday. If I go to work on Sunday, I'll, I get overtime, I get extra, you know, and you're trying to like store up treasures here on earth through your labors and forsaking the holiness of the day and replacing it with greed or you know, a wantonness for, for riches. You know, that's where we have to guard against working uh, on the, the Lord's day. You know, make it holy 
if you are going to do something, do it for the right reason. Do it to help someone, to reach out, to be um, there for someone else, and then you're going to be okay. Uh, you know, and like I said, Jesus was always getting in trouble for doing those kind of outreach jobs on the Sabbath. And there was one particular Sabbath that Jesus did more on that one particular Sabbath than on every day of his entire three-year ministry. One Sabbath day that, that he outdid himself uh, in, in work. Okay, and what day am I talking about? Well, if you remember, hopefully you do, Jesus died on the eve of the Sabbath on Good Friday. Of course, in those days, in the Jewish tradition, Saturday is the Sabbath, the seventh day of the week. And Jesus died on Friday late afternoon. And then our creed tells us that he died and then descended into hell. And then on the third day, he rose again. So, why? Why did Jesus descend into hell? Now, this isn't the place for the damned, the, the place for the unforgivable sinners. But until Jesus came, until the Messiah came, the gates of heaven were not open. Jesus had to unlock and open the gates to heaven through his death and resurrection. So all the souls, all the souls who had died up until that time, all the people in history that were waiting for the Messiah, that were pining for him, that were you know, the, the prophets and all the fathers, Moses and you know, everybody that, that lived before Jesus, all of them were waiting, waiting in the netherworld. And when Jesus died on the cross and descended down, all the way down, you talk about dirty jobs, right? Uh, he went down there and he raised them all up with him, rescuing all of their souls and bringing them into his father's house. I mean, that's a busy day. That's a lot of work to do on one Sabbath. Of course, he never gets any, any uh, pushback on that one, nor should he. He shouldn't have had pushback on any of them, but on that particular one, where he did so much that, uh, you know, and it gets overlooked. You know, we celebrate the Lord's Supper Mass on Holy Thursday, and we venerate the cross and, and, and celebrate his ultimate sacrifice on Good Friday, dying for us. And then we kind of gloss over Saturday until it's time for the Easter Vigil, where we celebrate his resurrection and that little bit on Saturday gets overlooked but Jesus worked you know he dug down deep and rescued everybody there's a lot of people a lot of souls to just raise up I mean that's just the beauty of the work of our Lord the work of the Holy Spirit the work of Jesus Christ our Savior, the work of God our Father. Labor is definitely sanctified. And even at, at Holy Mass, when, uh, during Mass, you know, when the, the gifts are brought forward, you know, we, we, the priest prays over the gifts, you know, the, the bread, you know, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. The cup of wine, fruit of the vine, and the work of human hands, recognizing human labor as being participators in 
these gifts. And that's what we're, we're always called to participate in the labor of our Lord, the work. We, we should do it with a, a happy, joy-filled heart and do it always for the betterment and for the good of his creation. So let us pray our evening prayer today on this Labor Day, celebrating the sanctity of work, of labor, doing things for the right reason. Why we do things is ultimately the important factor in what we do. We have to do it with, you know, we can praise God through our works every day. So we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Yours is more than mortal beauty. Every word you speak is full of grace. My heart overflows with noble words. To the king I must speak the song I have made, my tongue as nimble as the pen of a scribe. You are the fairest of the children of men, and graciousness is poured upon your lips, because God has blessed you forevermore. Almighty one, gird your sword upon your thigh, in splendor and state ride on in triumph, for the cause of truth and goodness and right. Take aim with your bow in your dread right hand. Your arrows are sharp, peoples fall beneath you. The foes of the king fall down in loose heart. Your throne, O God, shall endure forever. A scepter of justice is the scepter of your kingdom. Your love is for justice, your hatred for evil. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above other kings. Your robes are fragrant with aloes and myrrh. From the ivory palace you are greeted with music. The daughters of kings are among your loved ones. On your right stands the queen in gold of Ophir. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Yours is more than mortal beauty, Every word you speak is full of grace. The bridegroom is here. Go out and welcome him. Listen, O daughter, give ear to my words. Forget your own people and your father's house. So will the king desire your beauty. He is your Lord. Pay homage to him. And the people of Tyre shall come with gifts. The richest of the people shall seek your favor. The daughter of the king is clothed with splendor her robes embroidered with pearls set in gold. She is led to the king with her maiden companions. They are escorted amid gladness and joy. They pass within the palace of the king. Sons shall be yours in place of your fathers. You will make them princes over all the earth. May this song make your name forever remembered. May the peoples praise you from age to age. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. When you took on flesh, Lord Jesus, you made a marriage of mankind with God. Help us to be faithful to your word and endure our exile bravely until we are called to the heavenly marriage feast to which the Virgin Mary, exemplar of your church, has preceded us. The bridegroom is here. Go out and welcome him. God planned in the fullness of time to restore all things in Christ. Praise be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has bestowed on us in Christ every spiritual blessing in the heavens. God chose us in him before the world began to be holy and blameless in his sight. He predestined us to be his adopted sons through Jesus Christ. Such was his will and pleasure 
that all might praise the glorious favor he has bestowed on us in his beloved. In him and through his blood we have been redeemed and our sins forgiven. So immeasurably generous is God's favor to us. God has given us the wisdom to understand fully the mystery, the plan he was pleased to decree in Christ. A plan to be carried out in Christ in the fullness of time, to bring all things into one in him, in the heavens and on earth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. God planned in the fullness of time to restore all things in Christ. A reading from St. Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. We thank God constantly that in receiving his message from us, you took it not as the word of men, but as it truly is, the word of God at work within you who believe. Accept my prayer, O Lord, which rises up to you. Accept my prayer, O Lord, which rises up to you. Like burning incense in your sight, which rises up to you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Accept my prayer, O Lord, which rises up to you. Forever will my soul proclaim the greatness of the Lord. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He's cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Forever will my soul proclaim the greatness of the Lord. Let us praise Christ, who loves, nourishes, and supports his church. With faith let us cry out to him, Answer the prayers of your people, Lord. Lord Jesus, grant that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. Answer the prayers of your people, Lord. Preserve our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and Gregory John, our Bishop. Come with your power to help them. Answer the prayers of your people, Lord. Remember those who long for honest work so that they may lead a life of peaceful security. Answer the prayers of your people, Lord. Lord, be the refuge of the poor, their help in distress. Answer the prayers of your people, Lord. We commend to your care all bishops, priests, and deacons who have died. May they sing your praises forever around your heavenly throne. Answer the prayers of your people, Lord. And now, let us pray as the Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty Father, you have given us the strength to work throughout this day. Receive our evening sacrifice of praise in thanksgiving for your countless gifts. 
We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Enjoy the rest of your Labor Day evening, uh, taking a little bit of a time out from our labors to reflect on the importance of our labors, the sanctity of our labors, the, the downright holiness of the works we do. As long as you're done, in the right frame of mind and with your heart in the right place. God bless you all, and uh, have a great night. And we'll see you tomorrow.